Welcome to today's edition. In this edition, I'd like to uh, feature something we call branding for small businesses. Whether you are running a small retail shop like myself, sorry about the echo. As you notice, the background today is a lot changed because we are in the spirit of branding. We are doing some renovations in the small retail shop and that is why the room is um, producing a lot of echoes because we've had to transfer everything outside so that some of these renovations and branding can take place. So we will bear with me about the echo, but I hope I'm clear enough to express what I have to say today. So in the about branding, you know, when you hear someone talk about branding, you feel like, ah, that is something for big businesses, you know. What have I got to do with branding with my small business? And that is where you go wrong. Because in this era that we live in today, as much as things are moving very fast and changing, and you might be in a small business like myself, you keep consoling yourself that you do not need to do branding for your shop or your small business, and then that is where you go wrong. Because people associate with themselves with a brand. And you know, even without knowing, you know that you are a brand already, because how you carry out yourself, how you, uh, you serve your clients or your customers if you're in the service business or in a, a goods uh, selling business, then of course you are already a brand because of how you, 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 you handle your customers, how you present your business to the, to the people and the potential customers. So branding in today's world is something that even if you're running the smallest of all businesses, or oh, that is what you think, you cannot escape branding. You cannot. And I'm, I'm, I'm alive to this fact because I've realized that I'm losing on some customers. Some people just pass and you realize. Personally, I'm a very curious person and I keep expressing my questions to people. Sometimes I get very negative feedback, but most of the time I get the information that I want. So when I see someone, uh, you know, someone has sent a child to a different shop. And whatever they are carrying in the carry bag is just one of the things that I'm selling. So it ignites my mind and I ask myself, why is it that they didn't buy my show? There must be a good reason, you know. I don't start feeling envious that, you know, they didn't buy my place. But I want to know what is it that made them not buy from my shop. Then so I ask, like recently there was a child who was passing with, um, was it uh, jam? Yeah, I think it was, ah, it was blue band. Then I asked her, what is that you're carrying, blue band? And I asked her, how much did they sell to you? In fact, it was pricier than my whatever I was selling mine. So it got me thinking, yeah. But then that shop was looking very pretty. And also recently I was in Nairobi and I found small shops, you know, even very small businesses like Vibanda, you know. In Kenya, if you have a stall where you are selling grocery and this items like tomatoes and whatever the very miniature form usually is put on wooden frames that we call kibanda so i realized that some people have gone an extra mile to make their vibandas look very beautiful and appealing and that is branding because you want your business to stand out you know and most of the time when people talk about branding you feel like it is going to be a very expensive affair it does not have to be expensive let me show you an example. Nowadays, people are printing things and printing shops are all over town. So you do not have to go to very extra lengths to do branding for your shop. And also you should be ready to do some of these things yourself. But if you are not able to, then you should not struggle so much. Like something like this. This is a printout that I intend to put at the front, you know, the front door once I'm done because it communicates a lot and you also need to tell people that you are you know you are afloat with the current trends you should not be stuck with you know you'll pick your own goods at the shop right now you should even be able to deliver you can even do something like you know you are able to deliver goods to someone who buys goods worth 1000 kenyan shillings or more why not because you'll be, you'll be making sales 
So those are some of the things that you communicate on on these printouts. And these printouts nowadays are very available. You do not have to assume that these things are expensive. Kwanza, first of all, they are printed on some different quality of paper. Like this one is just ordinary paper, but it is, I don't know what they call this. When it is rained on, it does not uh, absorb the water, so it stays good for quite some time. So these are some of the things that I talk about when I, I talk about branding. And I'm going to show you a few clips on small businesses that are actually going out of their way to make their businesses stand out. So that you do not have to think that when you talk about branding, we only mean uh, branding for big businesses like, you know, Nakumat, Taskies, you know. We all remember Nakumat and Taskies long after they're gone because of branding. If I tell you Taskies and you are in Kenya right now, you know their brand was green and yellow. And it was capital letters in green. Why would I know that? Because that is what they made you remember. Yeah? If we talk about Nakomat, you know there were colors, their colors were white and blue. And there's something about them. There's something about their service that just stood out. They were able to serve customers very diligently with a lot of courtesy. And then most of the time they had a lot of, uh, you know, a variety of products on their shelves. So that is what branding is all about. And in this edition, I'm going to expound more about branding and I'll show you a few snippets of what I'm doing at my small retail shop so that I'm able to attract some of the customers that I feel usually just pass by because maybe they feel this show. <laughs> <laughs> How is this shop looking like? You know, initially I had the the front part was really undone. The step, I don't know, the fundi had made the... He did quite some substandard job anyway. So that when people were stepping on that part, the front part of the shop, it just fell out and there was cement there every day. And when it rained, now it became very muddy, you know. Those are some of the things that people do not want to associate themselves with. People want somewhere that looks a bit cozy, you know. The word is cozy. Yeah, somewhere attractive. You can even do a few uh, flowers here and there. You know, it does not cost you anything to make the environment ambient. You know, people pay for these things. You realize that someone moves out of their home and goes to a holiday. Somewhere where there are just uh, green plants and fresh air. And there's nothing much. They're just ordinary stools. They're just, you know, traditional stools. Maybe a very traditional setup. And you wonder, oh, this person, why would they want to go to such a place? But it is the extra, you know, that someone puts in their business, even those resort centers that make people want to pay. Because you'll find that probably the food is just the same as any other place or even if they go to a joint in town and eat they'll just eat the same food they're going to eat in this place but the difference is this place is more peaceful you know it has good ambience and you cannot compare it with a joint in a, one of the busiest streets in town so this person is paying for that environment and i think that is the same principle that you can use in your small retail shop and I'm also convinced that it is going to work in my favor. Uh, apart from that, it might be costly, depending on how much branding you want to do for your small uh, retail business. But in the long run, I feel like it is going to pay. Yeah, I think it is going to pay. So, in short, like they say, no gain, no pain, no gain. Yes. So you have to go through some uncomfortable periods as you brand your place. And it does not have to be instant. It is something that you can do gradually. You know, you address it step by step. But uh, at a personal level, I've felt really pressurized to do this thing once and for all because the presentation of the front part of the shop, like I've told you, was not good at all. And I had a feeling that I was losing on some clients and not just one or two target clients that I'm looking into are just passing and going, you know. 
And I feel like I can attract these people in a very intelligent way. Common but intelligent way. So that is what I'm doing. If you look around me, you'll realize that there's nothing. The fridge has nothing inside. The floor is messy. You know, content creation, I have to make sure that this place is looking very nice. But if I turn the camera right now, you'll understand that it's a mess. It's actually a mess. But it is a work in progress and I'm going to unveil it to you as soon as it is done so that you are able to see. It is just in a small way, you know. It is not a very huge way. It is a small way, but I'm hoping that it will change the perception of some of the clients that usually pass thinking probably you know that presentation looks very ugly probably they don't even have what i what i what i need so generally that is branding and like i've told you these things usually are very much available and if you notice if you notice that some of the big brands in the country i'll just mention some that i've been scrutinizing in the recent past for example every time i go to the fuel station it's been a while now because I do not ride my bike anymore. I hurt my hand and it's not really well healed. But I'm hoping that I'll resume once it gets well. And in the past when I used to go to these fuel stations, you know now you get up close where you can really scrutinize and see how come this thing usually stands out. There are some brands that usually stand out. And their presentation is usually consistent, you know. And it is something that you'd like to associate yourself with then it gives you the perception that that is a, a brand that is associated associated with the wealthy or the rich. But that is actually not the case because you'll end up attracting even ordinary motorcyclists fuel at these stations like Total and Shell. Why? Because they feel like they are getting value for their money. You know, you get, you get the presentation is very much in order. The staff are serving you very well. And then you are satisfied then it keeps you going and going so when i went closer to these uh, st fuel stations i tried to scrutinize the kind of merchandise they have for example some of the shelves they have at their front you know at the front areas i think they're just ordinary furniture but now they've made use of this you know they've made use of such kind of stickers so someone, you go to a good fundi and they make you maybe a shelf like this one, but then instead of leaving these edges very bare like mine are looking, you go and get someone who does the printing work. So he prints some, something like this for you, then you cut it up, and then you cut it in strips. For example, you put your name, like in my case, I'll just put the name of my shop, Haraka Retail Shop. And then instead of leaving these wooden parts bare, now you stick the sticker on those areas so that it's looking a bit you know someone may think you you are even you've imported those things <laughs> kumbe they are just wooden uh, shelves that you've gone an extra mile to make them look more appealing to the eyes you know and then of course you line the shelves with something that is brightly colored you know you don't want dark colors when you're doing branding for your small retail business yes i'm sure you've seen these things and then something else that i noticed with them even the shelves where they put their candy you know usually they have some these petrol stations like shell and total they have a, a what is it called a small shop at the back usually i know you've noticed such i don't know what is it it is called a convenience store yeah i think a convenience store is the name so where you can buy it's, uh, travelers can buy some of these things that they need when they're in a hurry, you know. And usually the prices are very high. Who does not know that the prices are usually hiked in such shops? But still people buy. Why? Because you feel good when you go to a good shop and buy things. Even if you're overspending. You just, it's just human nature. People feel good when they spend their money in a place that is looking lush and beautiful and clean. And people are at your service, you know, it works on you psychologically and you feel re re really good. So that is the mentality that you need to use in your small retail business. Don't leave your business looking like... There are some people who don't even sweep the front part of their shops. You just wake up in the morning and you open the shop. All the trash from yesterday is accumulated there. Those are put-offs. Those are put-offs. 
People don't just care about buying bread from your retail shop and going away. And then if you are running a small saloon, you find someone has not even removed hair from yesterday. A lot of braids that were, were strewn on the floor, their new customer comes in and he's stepping on them. It doesn't feel good, you know. Someone wants a safe place where they are coming to spend their money. It does not matter whether the business is big or small. And it, this is especially so for small businesses because I feel like uh, people in small businesses do not really take time to invest in the outlook of their businesses. So, I hope this encourages you to do something in your capacity. And then even if you, do, you are not in a position to print such kind of things, you can just start with a good and writing. You know, I've seen some shops where people just indicate prices of things very nicely. A good handwriting with a clear felt pen on white paper, and then you you stick it somewhere on the shelves or on the counter where people can see the prices, you know, and the name of these items. It looks very organized and it works on the customer or on the client psychologically so that they feel like, you know, this is someone I can give my money. This is someone I can trust. And then it keeps you selling. It keeps you on top of the game. It keeps you in business. <laughs> random images I took of uh, small businesses that I think rank in my category. It's only that 
um, in a sort of a permanent building and those ones are in uh, these prefabricated uh, fabricated shops. But in terms of stock, you realize that those people are very well stocked. Yeah, some of the shops are featured, and you see some stand out because they have signboards at the at the front. They have their names well written on the front parts of the door, and you know they 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 are displaying all the merchandise they have. They are not hidden inside. You know, you just have to be aggressive. Even if you are running a shop, you don't put all your things inside and yourself you've disappeared inside there so people don't even know what's usually happening what's usually happening inside here you display everything you've seen even hardware nowadays people bring out all they have and put on the veranda so that people can easily spot what you are selling yeah that one along with the name of your business and an outline of what you are doing or the services you are offering i think will go a long way in helping you to sell and to remain afloat so that you don't end up saying ah i started that business and i closed it up in uh, maybe three or four months before you close your business after opening it always remember why you started number two what are you doing to make your business stand out and that is what we call branding as usual i'm not an expert in this field i'm just someone who is sharing knowledge hoping that we learn and grow together and most of the time I'm also speaking to myself because the more I tell myself these things, the more, the more I'm, I'm convinced that I can do this. And I'm hoping that you also, of course, I'm sure, I'm, not, I'm now moving from the stage of hoping that this information is helping someone. I'm gradually moving to the stage of believing that I'm actually talking to people who are going to implement some of these changes in their small businesses and report great changes even if you can comment any positive changes you've seen in your small business in the comment section hey such comments usually make my day like recently someone shared with me if you see the comment section under some of the episodes i did in small retail shop businesses you'll see some of very com yani some very positive comments that left me really touched someone mentioned that they had recently lost their job imagine and then now they've had had to start a retail shop a small retail shop and they find some of the information that i share on this channel very uh, useful and that really made my day if i open my profile and in and i get such kind of comments that is why i get the energy to keep doing this like right now I'm not even changed. After I came from work, I've done one, two, three, and I decided I'm going to shoot this episode because if it helps even one or two people, then my day is made. My day is made. My day is made because I've touched a life. And that is what this channel is all about. So you can share your experiences in the comment section. I'm not an expert. I'm just someone on the road of trying to make these things happen. And I believe that this is going to happen for me and this will also happen for you if you keep working at it if you keep uh, sharing the information that you have yeah somehow i think people who are struggling are the ones usually in the limelight like this so one day if you see me disappear <laughs> in the meantime as i struggle i'll share information here so that we learn anyway just on a light note and with that i come to the end of this edition and uh, till the next one it's bye for now <laughs>